skyward. That's where my attention is going. It has been taken. There's not much more I can say about the unlucky Barry situation that, you know, you know, he wins, he gets what he wants. And, and then I think, I think Pat Buchanan said it the best. He said he was recounting a war, you know, an ancient war, where the winner, as told in a, in a book by Plutarch, where the winner, um, you know, they win, and they look at all their dead friends on the battlefield, and the commander, you know, he wins it all, right? He is the victor. And he says all his friends are dead on the battlefield. And, um, uh, and he says, well, if we have one more victory like this, we're going to be lost forever. And I was amazed that Pat Buchanan came up with that. That's an article he wrote for World Net Daily. I suggest you read it because it is predictive and prophetic about Obama and kind of confirms everything I told you when people were laughing at me. Don't you remember, folks, how long ago people were laughing at me when I said the thing about Obama and unlucky buried? And they would write me and say, he gets everything he wants. He's the Antichrist. I said, no, he's not the Antichrist. He's... I know you don't believe this, but he hasn't gotten everything he wanted. I mean, you know, he's won the battles and lost the war, if you like. You know, he won Obamacare. But he lost for generations of pissed off people and turned off people. The socialist dream is over. It's the socialist nightmare. And that will be reflected in the 2014 elections. And uh, it will be reflected in the confidence of everything. So yes, he won. He got Obamacare. And he won. And it's going to kill his friends. Um, so what price victory? And all this is now in the mix. And I'm not the only one saying it. But I was, you know, out ahead with Unlucky Barry, as you know. And Unlucky Barry... Um, well, they're not laughing at me now. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Because I usually, and that's where I come into this, because, you know, you don't need me to repeat what all the other talk show people say, and this is uh, audio verite. It's, it's supposed to be natural. The idea is this and music and this whole sonic kind of thing comes organically and uh, in, a, in, a, in a, um, a truth way, you know, rather than, you know, coming up with a show to entertain you or to sell products or whatever. It's, um, it's, it's really more about something else. And um, anyway, I asked, inquired of the Lord last night, just this was brief, but my attention has been taken skyward. And there's just some unfinished business and a whole bunch of questions that need to be answered for me personally that has to do with the skies. And um, and I just so happened to be, oddly enough, uh, well, I watched a series called Falling Skies. I mean, on, on DVD. I don't know how old it is or whatever. And then, then I was in Walmart, and they had a another version. Like there was another season after that. I thought that was it. And then I watched it, and it you know brought up questions in my mind. And I take them to the Lord, and I and I just encountered some. NASA footage, some footage around the uh, International Space Station and the thousands of UFOs there. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a very matter of fact. I mean, they don't do anything like come toward you or, you know, the, the, the camera's going and it's a very dry, just a, you know, the camera's going and they're flying in and out nonchalantly and it's got nothing to do with the space station. They're just out there. Millions of them, thousands and millions of them. And to me, they were like fish, like the, the ships themselves were, they were white. And they had, um, and I've seen this before with some footage supposedly from Area 51, but, you know, it's, it's I am going to have to approach this very delicately and just, I'm, I'm the guinea pig. See, some of those are my brothers up there. And what's up there? Okay, I can tell you what's up there. 
I can tell you at least this. It's all war. <laughs> yeah, and there's different zones, but it's, you know, when the Bible talks about the war in the heavens, boy, it ain't kidding. It's war. But then there's keys to our past out there, too. We have a collective amnesia because we're in a pris you know, prisoner of war camp. That's really what this is. Well, everywhere else is a war. And this is like a prisoner of war camp. And then not all of us are here. You know, it's, it's, it's very hard for me to explain. It, it doesn't, I'm not seeing a picture where I can explain something except that certain basic things that you probably have heard, but um, I was able to see in a, in a different light. I don't think that's the right... I have capsules here. Do I have to say my name? It's F. Daniel. Such a sonic sound trumps light. Sound creates the world. Sound propels the ships. Okay. Well, anyway, so... And... You know, there's just a few little things I can say. It's all war. And why was it kept out of here? And why are we here in the enemy's grip? And we are in the enemy's grip with amnesia of who we are as a people. And, oh, oh, oh okay, here's another point. The, the captors... Are, you know, and you know this, but I'm just, let's just go over what I got raw, raw data from last night. The captors are reptilian and they, um, you know, and they have the grip and they provided this existence that um, only the creator, the one, can get us out of. And we have this collective amnesia. That's the best way I can put it because we know everything going on out there because we all came from there. So, and then it's all tied with the spiritual and with the dream life. And, you know, and then it gets murky because it's just like on all these different dimensional levels of which the dream world is a, a dimensional level. The higher states of consciousness, which people access and probably do themselves harm with psychedelics, fasting, change in diet to be like eating, you know, like a fasting type diet with nuts and seeds and, you know, and minimal fruits and, you know, just basically getting themselves attuned out of the body and out of the density and into a higher dimensional consciousness. But then the problem is they have trouble explaining what they see. And indeed... It is, um, but from a liberal, literal camera point of view, from a literal 3D view, these, you know, skyfish, which is what they remind me of, and when I looked at the, the raw footage, it, it was uh, presented, there was a cosmonaut, a Russian cosmonaut who'd been to the space station, the footage was real dry, not colored, but just basically black and white, uh, there was no fanfare, nothing sensational, uh, so, but I noticed that same shape, the, the ship with the uh, donut hole, and, the, and there are thousands of them, not like one or two, and some streaking by, thousands, and they were more like schools of fish rather than, you know, and they were, they were attracted to energy sources, like they, they, when, when there's thunderstorms, they all come down and they hover over the storm and suck up the energy that way, and you know, and, and it's just strange. They're like these conscious, you know, it's not going to help. Uh, is there a humanoid shape in there? I don't think there's any in there with these things. I think those are um, hard for me to describe what they are, but they all look identical and they don't look mechanical at all, but rather organic, like a species. And, you know, and that, I guess, started the ball rolling. Well, how would I know that? And, um, and then there's a lot of other fill-in-the-blank things that have to occur. And I don't know where it actually goes, but the, the, um, the idea that we feel that we have somehow 
Like I feel I have another life. And as a spirit warrior in another life, it's like, but it, that, that one can come and go in 3D reality, but is in another dimension that I relate to as myself. And I used to be on board every once in a while for, it was always warfare against a Satanist, against somebody being cruel, against, you know what I mean? And, and, and he or I would, you know, go tie up the people so they wouldn't do anything wrong. And it was quite uh, frustrating because I'm, I'm stuck here. And then eventually I sort of forgot about that and I just let that ride. And then I realized, I said, Lord, I've been living in density the last, how many years? where I've just been, you know, sleep and awake, eating, uh, you know, composing things, doing things, but I just, my consciousness has not been attuned to that, those frequencies because every time it was before and I would get downloads and uh, what I call the angelic script writing, you know, and, and different mathematical formulas, and it was like, yeah, but what, what is this going to do me except try to wake me up, and yet, well, what good is that since I'm stuck here? See what I mean? So it gets frustrating, and then you kind of forget, but the things that I've, for example, the artwork of being, of the soul tethered to the pyramid, that was perfect. I didn't know what it meant at the time, um, but I painted it. I got another painting, another image of this, alien being that appeared in the room, you know, it was like three feet tall, these huge eyes that scared me so much I couldn't get out of bed, I was paralyzed by them. And yet there was a light back behind the eyes going back and forth. And now I've seen that same kind of light on Star Trek. I'm like, how did they know? Because this guy came through the wall, he just appeared at the doorway of the bedroom in 1992. And he had the large eyes so much they scared me. I did a painting of it and I captured it and I messed it up because it, it scared me so much when I recreated it. Because I didn't create just the eyes, I created the feeling. Like if you looked at the painting, you would have the feeling of the invasion I felt. It was terrible. It was terrifying. And this is just a little robotic three foot tall being, but it obviously was supernatural, you know, the ability to appear and disappear at will. And with these little lights in the eyes back behind, going back and forth. It was very important. What weren't, they weren't just stayed pieces of light behind the black eyes. They went back and forth. And the one on Star Trek went back and forth the same way. I, you, I just saw it. And I thought that was really weird that they have that going back and forth like that. And then I had done battle with them where they would throw, obviously there were ships out there with bad guys in it, who were messing with me. And by the way, they mess with you too. They're all over the, they encircle the globe. And they are total surveillance. And they're in the mind of everyone. They're, they're not only just total surveillance, they're mental surveillance. And they, and, but they have physicality and they have vehicles and they, they attack. And they can alter reality where, you know, suddenly there are people there out in front of you in time and space that, are waiting for you, you know, the, the kind of the gang stalking aspects, but some of that is like supernatural because you go, how can these people know uh, where I'm going or what I'm thinking or where? And um, the idea is those are puppets that are being manipulated by these people in the spaceships, which are also underneath the globe, I mean, inside the earth, and they, they have the earth, and, and it's, it's teeming with life and teeming with all kinds of activity, and yet we're hidden from it all. And we have the Bible, and thank God for that, you know, to give us comfort, to, to, to show how the Lord mocks these people. Anyway, Washington, uh, the governments, these are run by the reptilians, and run to make you think by the reptiles to make you think that there's some sort of democracy going when it's not ruled by man, it's ruled by them, and they have the right to do it. Uh, there's plenty of evidence biblically for it, although the Bible is not a perfect um, thing to judge anything on because it's been 
edited and, and used to manipulate people and everything else, so we have to take it very carefully, but it's still my go-to book, especially the Old Testament um, and the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. Well, all of it, really. I mean, you can't use one without the other, but I mean, it's it, you have to be led by the Spirit to the certain scriptures that would tell you things, you know, to inform us about what's going on. There's limitless things going on in the sky. Yet we're actually to the point where we think, like the Flat Earth Society, we think that we are it and that everything revolves around this Earth. And it doesn't. It just seems like that. But at the same time, we are kept from the outer world. And we're kept from the outer world because of some kind of deal between Satan and Yahweh. And there are rules established that can't be broken. And so, you know, one of them is that he's the only way we can get out of here. They will persecute anyone that goes with Jesus. Jesus, Yahweh, is one, and then we're one also. We are I am. When, he's, when we're joint heirs in Christ, it just means Christ sits on the throne. There's no multiplicity, and I know that sounds weird. At the same time, you do have your life. At the same time, I have mine. At the same time, my life and your life are not in this dimension, which is bizarre. But now I can say, not just me, but you also. So we are unable to get back to who we are already, which is in eternity. But if we were, then Satan's game would be over because we would win then. So this war is universe-wide, however big the universe or universes or multiverses, or whatever you want to call them, however big that is, it's all warfare. In this particular configuration, there is a Zion, there is a New Jerusalem, there is a, you know, another aspect to this, where there is peace. But as far as you can go out there, and, and also the, uh, you know, the one good thing, I guess, is that the bad guys always appear as angels of light and uh, they try to appear as the good guys. You know, it's backward. Everything is through a mirror, a lens, glass darkly. Everything is presented backwards, backwards, so that you see the angel of light come down in a beautiful uh, Christmas tree lit up ship, and you think, oh, they're going to rescue me, finally. And uh, they'll turn out to be, ha, 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 hoo, 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 the bad guys. And then the good guys seem cold and distant, and they don't really interact too much. Like, say, angels and, you know, some of these ships that, seem benign out there that seem to be their ships but they're also organic in some way and they you know and then we have some kind of prehistory and some kind of incarnations and reincarnations and reincarnations and memories and dreams and and ties to all of this because we're involved in it but now we're here feeling separate which is how you would feel in a prison where you're kept in kind of a solitary confinement and you know, we have prison life, you know, and we think that's real, but we're part of a long history, a long series of things. And yet there's no history in eternity, I'm aware of that. But I mean, in this, as you look out there, we're part of a long, we're part of a, uh, we're part of it all. And have been a part of it all throughout everything called time and space. And yet we have no memory. It's, 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 it's like we've been clipped and you know generations are dying here and new ones come out that's why you know and that, but death is not the end because death is only the beginning because remember they are harvesting souls and they're harvesting souls on the moon I know it's weird to say but that's been confirmed about three times I thought I was insane for having that when did I have that 1990 1991, 1990, 1991. That's when that's when uh, I was shown that crystal, uh, some sort of crystal operating center and a uh, this soul scalping thing. They were both locationally similar on the moon. Sounded really bizarre to me too. I didn't even I didn't tell many people. I wrote it down along with the angel script writing and the the different mathematical formulas, I sort of hid them away somewhere, and I, don't, I just didn't want to, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I had this need to get away from them, because they would, you know, I, I felt their presence, they were mocking me and torturing me, and I got into scrapes with them, and, you know, the, 
this thing went on a while, not just that one dude in the room, but then there was the ships and there was the, they had these wheels they would throw at you and you throw it back at them. And there's, it, there's all this stuff going on and, and, and in another dimension, I had all the knowledge to fight them and I, and I could defeat them. Like I just knew what to do. And then when I was done with them, I just didn't think about them again. Maybe it just wasn't time because, you know, but I did warfare as a human and then remembered I am ancient and, and have all these skills. And they were summoned and available and I defeated them. And then those little, those little dudes didn't show up anymore. No, I didn't feel helpless. I defeated them and they all went away. And, it may, and I said, well, maybe they went away because I've got nothing to do with anything or I'm such a peon that uh, you know they want to go deal with the uh, the uh, you know the DNA and bloodline groups that they've been dealing with, cultivating here to produce this perfect hybrid or whatever this perfect race, and um, you know they 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 want to go mess with them. You know what I mean? These generational people that they've been uh, harvesting and uh, farming. And I'm just a wild derelict. And then it turns out later, no, I'm not a wild derelict. I'm not, I'm not a nobody. But I am obviously against them and a warrior and effective, or not here. I can't be effective here. I was that day. But it's sort of like, you know, I earned my sovereignty. You know what I mean? I earned it. They got to leave me alone. And, uh, you know, but then after that, I fought the witches, you know, then there's the witches all around me. And, you know, they, they, ouch, they make scars, too. You know, all this was but one big scar here. But the main thing is, and I, I'm hoping there'll be some answers. I don't know why this is all coming up now, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it won't just be the same frustrating thing as uh, it has been, which is, you know, again, I'm, I'm doing my time. And um, I don't know exactly what I did or how it happened or how I came to be here. But I know this, that there's a whole bunch of things going on out there. And they would have you believe, like the Christian religion and stuff, they would want you to believe that this is it and this is all that Yahweh is concerned with and this, this is it here and the garden and humanity and there's nothing else going on it's like well there better be something else going on because this is in in the perspective of things if you were to get enough distance from the earth and see it as a speck of dust in the sky and see everything else going on it, you, you just defies logic that there wouldn't be other things going on I mean you know that there would be this one little speck where there's a little bit of specking of speck speck dust moving around and um, I could even see I was taken to a, to a dimension where I could see good and evil as not being as being both benign, as both being impersonal. All the pain and suffering we go through here at another level is just to someone else, somewhere else is impersonal. It's it's not. It's um, just looked at like you would look at a Nat Geo film about how the animals get along on the Kalahari Desert or whatever. You you would. You know, you, you would take a an impersonal view of it. It's it's like on that level. And then as I looked around, I could see, you know, well, there's there's all this other stuff going on. But what is this about ruling over all this? That's like the Lord rules over it all and is sovereign beyond it all. But nothing else is sovereign. Nothing else is, unless you're in Him and He's in you as one. And then then you're kind of, you're there, but you're, it's just one, there's one on the throne, not millions on the throne sitting there all having a great time. It's just, that's the mystery of it. And uh, like I say, all the mind control is all inaccurate, but, and then the New Agers get a hold of the UFO thing and they run with that with all the, the kind of pagan concepts. And it's like, okay, well, obviously we're screwed here because we just don't seem to ever get a point of view of, of what's going on. And I think, other people too get frustrated and they drop it, you know. Then there's a the connection between animals and the UFOs and the animals out there that are UFOs, which are animals. And that's a whole other field of, and that's diversity, billions and trillions and quadrillions of whatever, that's going on all over the place. 
and then NASA covered all that up. It, it, now the footage is, you can see it on YouTube. I don't even know where the channel is, but it's just really very simple. It's, it, uh, I, I checked it. It's not animated. It's not messed with. It's not Photoshopped. It's just raw data, raw footage. And it's like, it's not very exciting either. And it's just matter-of-factly there. And then, and then around it all, there's all this UFO like this, UFO that, and most of that's fake, and then and, uh, and there's this one. And, you know, it's just, it's just a matter... What, what, why is it real? Because it's matter-of-fact and nonchalant. It's just a camera on the space station just recording, you know, just filming the sky or whatever, and these things are going by. It's, there's nothing going on. Like, they're not coming up to the lens and saying, ooh, ah, you know, this is the... You know, they're back and all that. This has nothing to do with that. It's just impersonal. And when I see that kind of in, that impersonal thing, that kind of raw data thing, you know, I tend it tends to get my uh, attention. But I don't see anything else on the Internet. That, you know, I see kind of distant sightings here and there and something streaking across the sky, something floating in the sky, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, all that I just really discount, but these are more like fish, you know. I don't know how big they are, but they more like reminded me of fish. And I'd seen them before from the time of like, remember the Bob Lazar controversy in Area 51 and that, maybe that was a whole disinfo campaign, but there was somebody that had a, had a, had a close up of, of, you know, a, a disc ship that had a wedge out of it and a, had a, like a donut hole in the center. And that was from way back around 1990. 1989, maybe late 80s, or you know, I'm not sure, but that was around, and then and then that's what these were like. But they were kind of traveling in groups sometimes, and like schools of fish, and uh, and you know, some were streaking by, you know, quickly, and you would see uh, uh, and there was just this kind of uh, like an otherworldliness, like when you're under the ocean and you see fish in a school going this way or that way. They go about their business and they don't pay attention to you necessarily. Um, and then I realized, well, gosh, there's trillions of stuff like this going on throughout out there. And NASA covered it all up. And now, look, NASA doesn't cover it up because and people aren't getting killed because because nobody is looking and even when they see it they don't care. We're at that level of mind control where probably the, you know, one of the greatest stories of all would be what these cosmonauts and astronauts have seen out there, and um, and you know they, of course they had gag orders but now they're talking and nobody cares. <laughs> this POW camp is the thing that's important. And I'm telling you, there's, there's, it's infinitely better to know about what's going on out there than to be focused on this. It's because there's a whole history that's been wiped out of our minds. There's adventures been wiped out of our minds. There's whole worlds that we were part of that have been wiped out of our minds. There's whole, there's relationships. There's, there's all kinds of things, and we've been, you know, tethered here. And uh, and I understand, you know, I did, you know, the, the story of gar the garden, you know, and all that is what should, I take it as a metaphor and a kind of an allegory, and you know why, why you know we're tethered after that because of sin coming into the world, and you know there's a there's a you know a, um, there was a block put on the DNA to um, knowing uh, not only knowing everything but also. Uh, uh, living eternally, it's in, in our DNA. You know, there's there's some kind of portal through the within, dealing with DNA that has to do with getting back on track as to where we were, and then why we're here because what a battle was lost. It's legitimate we're here. We did something wrong. We screwed up. Uh, I haven't gotten any clarity on any of that. A friend asked me about whether I thought we were tampered with by the aliens. And when you say aliens, it's such a broad term, it's very difficult for me because it's, it's just a very... I have a picture that's not acceptable and would not be acceptable on ancient aliens at all or any of these TV shows because it is just so murky right now. But at least I know one thing. I exist there. I'm at war. It's all war all the time. 
just blows my mind. And I mean, there is something beyond that we could call Zion or, 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 or New Jerusalem or whatever you want to call it. But as far as we're concerned, we're sequestered in a POW camp. And we were there in this war. And now we're here, uh, captured by the reptilians. And generations have gone by with no progress, you know, except they keep, you know, trying to mind control us and shape us. And what they want you to do is they want you to take a Luciferian oath, an oath to the lizard, okay, and basically sell your soul, you know, or be killed. And they want to move it to that level. And it's like, because they're harvesting and, re and I, you know what, I used to know about that too, but there's this whole harvesting and reharvesting of of uh of us you know and they are our overlords and this is just unacceptable and the persecution of christians is because um of this battle of this situation they have you know and they know they're going to lose those people and they're going to go back with the lord and they're going to be alive and then you know you have the battle in the heavens with the with the fallen and unfallen angels and myriads and myriads of beings fighting it out in the universes and that's physical but it's kind of psychophysical spiritual where we have and it transcends time and space and yet it's in time and space it's just the most bizarre thing it's very hard to describe you know some people would say well that's the occult you're not supposed to look at that. It's like, no, that's not the occult. The occult is when you look through the veil and you see the dark side, you know, mainly. There is no light side occult. There is no God occult, right? But these things have been hidden from us, like what's going on on the moon. And we can just take the, from it from a physical per perspective. What's going on on the moon? Okay, totally hidden. What's going on at the space station? Completely hidden. What's going on with all these millions of UFOs that the military can't control? Totally hidden. How about the fact there's good guys and bad guys out there and, and people involved in human life that are preventing nuclear war and things like that and others who are trying to foment it and all of this and us caught in the balance in between. And, um, you know, the, the rule is that there's one way out of here and that the Lord has to take us out to the next step beyond. And then the idea that when, when we rule over a place, when we rule over the earth, when we rule over the cosmos it's game over for them so they have a vested in and then and then there's all in between stuff where there's swashbuckling stuff going on you know star wars and then the end game of it all is that we're not really a, a, in a human form anymore but we are rulers over it all we are the ruler we are i am there's no separation then of course, that's no fun, right? That's a solid state, and you want to break out, and you, we all have our lives, and we all have to resolve all these dramas, and part of the drama is to resolve who you are in this other thing, and I think there's a disappointing thing to it. If you find out who you are in this whole thing, like I, I was asking the Lord, I said, well, if, if there's no death and they're fighting, if we're fighting each other, what are the consequences if you lose a battle or you win a battle? How does that work? And then, you know, the Lord showed me humanity as uh, losing the battle and the consequences are being here in this prison camp and that's having lost the ba a battle out there here we are and that makes sense because before I used to think well if angels can't die what's the sense of them battling each other and beating the crap out of each other it's just like the cartoon characters they can't die. Well, what, what, so what do you mean, the war in the heavens? What are the consequences? And apparently there are consequences. And, and the good guys win and the bad guys win. It's no different from war on, you know, when you're out in Afghanistan or Iraq. It doesn't matter what political forces brought you there. There's an enemy out there, and you're not the enemy, and you've got to kill them or be killed by the enemy. Same principle. And it's all war all the time. That was the one kind of revelation I had that seemed to make sense to me, but I'll have to test the hypothesis. Uh, all war all the time. I understood that on a deep level. 
And that, that may be the most significant thing I got so far. But we'll just, look, we'll just have to monitor this situation. I, it must be that there's going to be an answer for some people pretty soon. Some kind of revelation or, well, I don't know, some kind of thing where some people will be restored to where they were, you know, and, uh, but where you were is, you know, basically in a battle like you're, like you're in the army. You know, you see what I mean? It's, it's, and I guess you know who you are and I'm, I'm talking about it now still with fraught with amnesia and with, with a blocking of all memories and realizing I'm an ancient being and, and, and realizing that, uh, I'm eternal at the same time, realizing I'm a warrior, realizing I'm a whole history, and can't remember a damn thing. And yet, at times, I've proven that I am because I've seen myself go function in the affairs of men and, uh, and saw res physical results that were reported to me that verified that I was there. But it was too hard to keep up with myself, to keep tuning in into the spirit and go along. I, maybe I will now. Because it was like, well, that's going to go on whether I'm consciously tuning in or not. So I'm a multi-dimensional being, and I'm existing somewhere. And in that form, I guess I'd be like an angelic kind of warrior being that goes around, you know, beating the crap out of Satan or of witches or people that are hurting people or people throwing whammies or whatever. I was involved in. I saw results of you know physical manifestation results. And I, I, I watched and I observed for a while, but it seemed like I didn't need to be there. And yet there I was in an eternal being self, and I, I couldn't get a clear picture of it in terms of what I was wearing, how, how old was I, what, 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 what kind of appearance did I have. I was definitely in the fourth or fifth dimension because it wasn't literally real, but yet witches, different, you know, people were at war with or with the witches, right? So they were aware and there was a battle going on, and uh, that's that's all. It's kind of murky, and I didn't need a, a spaceship to travel around in either. You know, it's like if I wanted to make one, I'd just dream one up and fly across the universe, or be back in one second. Uh, anything was possible. But again, murky view, hard to 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 separate that from the realm of fantasy. I don't think it was fantasy because it wasn't something that was recurring. It was something that happened that was matter of fact. See, whenever you have this lack of drama involved, where it's a matter of fact, oh yeah, kind of thing, um, then I tend to I look at that as being more important and more truth, more more truth. But but there's not an emotional connection to propel me on. And whenever I felt this emotional connection to really propel me on, I've always found that I've been deluded that it was the realm of uh, my mind being manipulated, you know, and, and so the matter of fact stuff is more the real stuff, but then there isn't the follow through, for, for, which is, you, you know, you let it go, like when I saw that footage of the uh, sky fish, we'll call them, you know, the disc UFOs with a little wedge out and a donut hole in the middle. Uh, if you could Google it uh, or YouTube Google it, YouTube search it, it would be, I think, uh, I don't know, it would be space station, alien, cosmonaut, whatever, I don't know. It, it, it's, it was around, it was, you know, pretty much all over YouTube. Uh, and the, the reason I liked it was because it was very matter of fact and it was like, yeah, you know, schools of fish, you know. How many people have seen the UFOs go up and see lights in the sky and they join together, then they separate, then they, like doing a dance, right? It's like, you know, it's like you're looking at a Nat Geo thing about, oh, these are living beings in the sky and this is what they do, you know, right? Like animals. And, um, and then you've seen them in the Mexico City footage, which was, I think, pretty convincing, and they th sometimes fly in a formation, then they join together, then they break apart, and then they don't talk to the people. They're not interacting with people in any way, shape, or form. It's these same kind of, you know, skyfish kind of things, you know. They, they seem impersonal and distant and, 
you know, they'll, they'll, they, sometimes they seem playful like dolphins to me, you know, how dolphins will play in the, in the, in the waves and they'll chase each other and they'll, they'll ride the waves and they'll go up or whales when whales come into and they breach. Uh, we've, I've been surfing with a whale right next to me with a gray whale breaching right next to me, scared the, you know what out of me, but they would come in into like Zuma beach and they would like ride waves and stuff, <laughs> whales and then dolphins. And then I always felt that they had a connection with all this. They were like somehow like these beings that were out there and there was some kind of weird connection, but you try to get close to a whale or a dolphin, they don't care about you. They're in, it's impersonal. They go about their business and if they're having their kids, you know, where they're teaching their kids to swim and stuff and you get close to the pod, the, the bulls of the pod will womp on your ass. There is no friendly flipper or let's swim with the dolphins in this cosmic new age kind of um, cosmic consciousness thing. And isn't it great to be vegan and, and talking with the space creatures and having, there's that whole thing you can enter into which, which then you get deceived because it becomes this whole emotional thing. And it's, you know, I'm not going to put any rules on this. I'm just going to say we have an ancient history, all of us. We're in a POW camp here, and it behooves us to get the heck out of here. But once we do, I just want to warn you, you're going back to the front lines. Yeah. Um, heaven, quote unquote, as it turns out, is simply a, a bloody battlefield. And that's what awaits if we can get out of here. But the idea of being recycled here over and over again, this is not acceptable to me. How about you? And this, since this is what's going on, I don't care whether it jives with the, the Bible or not. If this is the reality, I, well, you, you can read it and you can find ways of making what I just said work out. It's just that when I, I'm, I've left the evangelical slave trade behind. They are basically lizardine, luciferians. They are, they are owned by the lizards. The, the evangelical church, not good for, for you know, it's, it's basically tethering you here. It, it's basically like, uh, you know, Colonel Clink or whatever. It, it's, <laughs> you know, they're the prison guards, right? They work for the reptiles, the organized religions. In fact, they're run by the reptiles. So what, that's all I need to know. So their whole thing about scripture, non-scripture, than that, doesn't matter to me. You know, they want you to believe the earth is flat and that we're the only thing going on in the universe. There's nothing else and everything else out there is demonic. That is completely false and a lie. We're afraid to look into it because we know we, we, we know what it would mean if there's a lot of things would happen. Yet we don't want to jump into the new age UFO movement and the thing with the dolphins and the UFO and the psychedelic paintings and everything, because we understand there's that angel of light, ascended masters kind of consciousness thing going on with that, and we understand that that you know that's the angel of light uh, reptiles, and uh, we we so you know where are our people? How does that work? And how does Jesus figure in? Is and you know I can say one thing: Jesus, Yeshua, uh, and Yahweh are the same. So. How do they figure in that that's the ruler of the, of the whole deal? That's, that's it. That's the pinnacle. And it's personal and impersonal. Yet there are handicaps and rules set up so that otherwise, you know, the people of light, let's say, would uh, just overturn the people of darkness and that would be the end of this universe. So to keep the universe going, we have to have this perpetual war. And beyond this is Zion, where there's nothing moving. You know, it's just, it's kind of like the state of is, the state of um, singularity in the sense of, 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 of one single thing, one single consciousness, one single conscious being, of which we're all a part, contained within. And, you know, there's, uh, and then it, it's like the expansion and contraction of the universe, right? That's the contraction. And the expansion is all this multiplicity, but we're all connected to God in some way, even the dark side, in a, in a way. 
and um, the divisions between people. I think that most people, you know, I would just listen to this outside the Christianese thing. I think that most people would agree with me if they're being honest on some of these concepts. The thing we want to know is, okay, how do we break free? The, the issue is not the Illuminati or whatever that is. The, the, you know, the satanic, for me, it, it's always been the sisterhood that ran the world. I don't know about any Illuminati. It's the, the witchcraft sisterhood in cahoots with the reptile that are running the world. And, and that's, you know, and, and I never got anywhere with that, but that's the damn truth, man. And, and uh, you know, and, and they're flawed, but that's the witches. And it's like you don't bow down to them. You don't, as it says in Ezekiel 13, very important the chapter, Ezekiel 13, very important. See, we can't do without that book. We need that book. See what I mean? But we don't want to fall into the Christian ease trap of the mind control programming of the Protestant and or Catholic churches because they have been misleading people from the very beginning. Like they, I call they, are, they should be called the Flat Earth Society because for them, we just appeared out of the womb. <clears throat> Forget the idea that we were, our, we were conformed to Christ before we came into the womb. Forget the idea that Jesus is really the creator and he reveals that in his word. He's really God. So when you say I've got God, then you're telling me you're my brother because you've, you've got, whether you know his name is you know, Jesus or the one or Yahweh or whatever, it's all the same thing. See, now that I know that, I don't need church. So therefore, it invalidates the church. So they have to mislead me. So I think I, so I, you know what I mean. Okay, the UFOs in the Vatican. There's the UFOs, aliens, if you will, and all that stuff going on. Now, are there aliens or beings in humanoid form that would be a mixed bag? Like they could have good and evil in them. And yep, that's absolutely true as well. They could be more like us as we are now. Could we as we are now be out there battling in, in the spaceships and being in Star Wars? Absolutely. And there are people out there doing that who are like us who have to work on, who have a sin problem. That's right. And then there's this sovereign thing about being Yahweh and I am and then the real ruler of the universe. But at the same time, there would be no universe on all these levels and no firmament if there weren't this light versus dark thing going on, which also manifests in our own DNA. So were we tampered with, my friend? Well, obviously we were tethered by tampering to the situation and given amnesia. So yes, our DNA was tampered with, absolutely. But we still have a way out. There will be some kind of intervention, you know, some kind of a, an opportunity to remember all this. And you'll remember that you've always been around. You'll remember all the battles. You'll remember all the writing. You'll remember the language. You'll remember everything. Because it's latent within you. And then they'll come closer. And, and you know, the other thing is in the, 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 the good guys, your people, are, you know, my people, they're all around and uh, they follow us as well and they run interference and they, they're, they're battling on our behalf, otherwise we'd be dead by now. So there's this whole thing being played out here and people are betting on it, which I don't like. There's a whole carnal aspect to it, yeah. There's, there's ships that fly around out there that abuse children and have orgies and stuff and, 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 and satanic ritual. Yeah, there's that. There's that too. So yeah, there's a, a gross a gross thing going on, mano a mano with the ships that are not necessarily... And Oh, there's people more backwards than us, consciousness-wise, out there in ships too. And they're battling it out and they're combing the universe, looking for whatever. Every once in a while, science will say it finds a planet like Earth, but it's 900 degrees hotter, so we can't live... You know, but there's got to be. There's got to be just billions of planets just exactly like Earth with oxygen to breathe and whatever would be compatible and copacetic. There's also worlds that have been made and formed out there that are um, 
you know, wouldn't be like rocks or planets or suns or whatever. And they're out there like big space stations where there's plants and animals and, you know, there's, there's also other kinds of beings that are not human, that are like not humanoid, not, you know, bipedal, not, they don't walk. They're, they're like these discs that fly around, these sky fish, sky dolphins, whatever you want to call them. And they're flying around out there in schools, you know, here and there. And, you know, and, they, they, and they have nothing to do with any of this. They're not battling anyone. They're just like a living being out in the uh, Nat, Nat Geo would be covering it. And, you, and you'd follow them along and see them siphon off energy off different, you know, planets. And, you know, they're hanging around. the. the these actually are hanging around the Earth. They're up in the upper atmosphere, right, like around this, where the space station is. They're, they're getting some kind of harvesting of energy and, and water and different things off the Earth. So they're like kind of like you know mammals in the ocean that need to breathe, right? And they have they have no regard for man whatsoever, and no connection. They're just doing their own thing. Then there's Star Wars going on where there's like good guys and bad guys fighting out, out in UFOs. Then there's all kinds of other things going on, and then there's the whole other dimensional realms, and it's 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 a big, it it can be categorized like this. The whole enchilada is one big battlefield, and it's seen, it's limitless in all directions, and it's interdimensional, and it's it, it, it's to enter into it is like entering into a dream world. When we escape this, we go into what we might call a dream world, but we're conscious in it like a lucid dream, where all kinds of things are possible physically uh, and mentally that wouldn't have been, and that's where we came from. That's where we came from. And yeah, there's consequences. Look where I am. Look where you are. Okay? So we lost a battle somewhere, right? Something happened. So there, you know, do angels die? Let's say, you know, we, have, we can't just categorize ourselves as all angels. We're beings. And the beings that protect us, we would call angels. But see, it's such a broad term that we need to forget that term and just go with beings. turns out that, and I said you all, so it must be you all that tune in here. I don't know about the people that are, that are the, the, the humanoids that have, that are owned by the reptoids from the beginning. I don't know how that works. But I will tell you this, you listening here came from there. And this is not your first rodeo. And anyone that would try to convince you of that is, is either a scumbag evil liar or they're just ignorant and you know, deserving of compassion, but if they're intentionally deceiving, then they're 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 worthy of a good rebuke, a good kick in the head. Oh, you can just laugh at them. The Lord showed me. He said, "The thing I want you to do, son, is when you encounter these people, start laughing, and you'll see they run for the hill." That's the one thing. Or, or in their midst, have a good time. If you're in a restaurant or a bar or something, and they 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 start coming around. You just start to um, show them how, you know, totally stoked you are with everything. Show them how happy you How can you not be happy with the Lord? We're happy. You know, and, and we're grateful. We go day to day nowadays because of the, uh, the, the battle coming to earth. But at the same time the battle comes to earth, all the portals will open up and all the information and you're going to know who you are again. I feel sorry for the people in the churches because I realize they're going to go down with the ship, down with the Titanic, because their controllers won't let them out to breathe. And that's so sad, I, but I can't do anything about it. Those are the rules. They're allowed to do that. They're allowed to take those people down. Those people did something to be taken down and further punished anyway. They've done, I've encountered them on the earth, and they're, you know, pretty mean. Anyway, I've got to run. Yes, uh, things are going on. I'll be back in touch with this, but I don't know what I can add. I'm, I'm sorry this has not been helpful to people that are, you know, I've, I'm kind of going in baby steps right now, but, you know, last time my mind was tuned to, to the uh, cosmos, I mean, all kinds of stuff was going on, and it wasn't all pleasant either. And then it ends up having something to do with you, and then it has to do with spiritual 
warfare and spiritual warfare becomes real warfare, and then it all it's all gets so confusing for us. You know, we you just can't. You got to have the Lord tethered to the Father, who's going to bring you through it. Because otherwise, um, it will be you'll lose. That's all I can say. You'll lose. You'll lose. Jesus is the only way through this. But then it's all you know. But then oh, but half the stuff of what's going on has been hidden. When Daniel said you're going to shine like the stars in the heaven, it's it's like you're going to, you know, meaning you're going to rule over your territories. But you're you know doesn't mean you're not going to be at war. You know this reality of light and dark, and and physical objects called planets and suns and moons. It's all at war anyway. It's 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 war and peace and it's cycles of stuff and and um, I don't even know if it's really important to even delve into it. I mean, I like I said, I got disinterested when I couldn't change my lot here. I was still stuck here, even though me in another dimension was going on and doing things. That disconnect uh, and the the fact that we could not connect, you know, that there's a block there. Um, I finally just gave up. I know that I function in another dimension, even as my own guardian angel at times, and and out there doing things. I know that's going on, but w what good does it do me? I'm, and I need to get out of here. And then it's like not so fast. Don't you realize that when you get out of here, it's just all war all the time. Great. No panacea, in other words. No, 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 no level of comfort that oh. Finally, ah, I can rest. No, no. You know, and, and you know what? I prefer it that way. I don't want to have a, a world with no war. I like war. I've, it's not like I want war. I don't want it, but it's kind of part of my nature. And, and maybe the Lord will work it out so I can just be an impersonal fish too. But part of my nature is knowing that I'm a warrior, you know, that's just what God made me, you know. And you just look what I do here with the, with the music. It's just... Uh, Completely contentious, right? Hundred percent. And uh, when people hear it, it flood, it clears them from the room. Uh, when you start talking about, you know, pedophiles, and you know, they start identifying that you're talking about them, you know, um, or or society, or you know, or being or being sarcastic, or they don't know what you're talking about, but it's disturbing to them. Um, you know, it's it's and, and you're using you're subverting it all by using the same beats and the same everything that the, the, the music industry uses and then you're turning it into the uh, warrior, the Yahweh side, you know, Yahweh side, our side, Jesus side, the, the side of, the, um, of these other aliens. <laughs> and um, they can feel that, you know. Uh, but how dark is the planet where people, it's a cliche that music will feed the, the devil's soul. You know, I rock it out to Justin Timberlake, and it's like, the devil, yeah. Worship me, worship me, worship me. Come see my next movie. I'm like, it's okay. No, 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 I'm not picking on anyone. I'm not picking on you. I'm just, there was an ad campaign I saw. I, I don't listen to Justin Timberlake. I, I wouldn't know his music if it, if it hit me in the head. I've, you know, I'm sure I've, I've, I've heard it along with all the rest of the pop devos and whatnot, but I'm, I'm just... It's like uh, with me, I'm. If I listen to music, I'll listen to good dub, electronica dub, and reggae dub, and and uh, some hip hop, and you know I like um, ambient dub a lot, and cinematic music, and you know with good composers, and I listen to rock and and metal at times, you know, and that's kind of it. It's kind of very narrow. It's like a lot of electronic dub, reggae dub. You know, cool urban dub stuff, and then and then you know jazz and fusion. Uh, I like a lot, and um, you know uh, classical to a certain extent. And and I, you know, have kind of bizarre tastes. You know, I mean, tastes that most people wouldn't have. Um, but when I want to groove, get a groove on, I like a lot of dub music and a lot of electronica dub. Dub meaning that you know you'll be dubbing in um, like hip hop is dub. You know you hip you dub in uh, singers and different people. I love electronica that from the '90s it would go on forever, like an hour's worth. You know, and it doesn't. And the beat keeps turning a little bit, and then they'll dub in you know 
some famous tracks here and there. It's kind of a DJ medium, but I mean, you know, it used to not be a DJ medium. There's a lot of people doing, uh, you know, use of uh, just manipulating, you know, sounds and and keeping like an electronic beat going and just creating a mental tableau of travel, a mental tableau of escape, a mental tra tableau of of just uh, extraordinary things. And it would make me think and make me see things, make me experience things that I couldn't otherwise experience. And that's why I like that kind of music. In fact, that's just, you know, I, I want to I wanna start doing some of that. Because I've been doing the three-minute song, the five-minute song, and I'm... My favorite was the long cinematic dub kind of flow. That was my favorite. And I... You know, I don't know. I like I like a lot of it, but I have never been a fan of country, really, or pop. Both of those, you know, like Michael Jackson, nice, it was great beats and everything, but I just couldn't quite get into it. You know what I mean? There was just something blocking me, and uh, pop, you know, uh, other pop stars, you know, the sort of Madonnas and earlier on in the '80s, and then as we progress through the various pop divas and the Rihannas and the, and the Keshas and the, you know, Gagas and the Cyruses now and all this kind of stuff, I just saw more as a burlesque, you know, more like uh, Broadway or something. You know, I don't see, I don't take it seriously. A lot of the kids do, you know, and they have this whole kind of teen culture and you look at the teen magazines, they, they love these, these pop divas are 20 years older than them, but they, they love them, and or Justin Bieber, and and they'll be more like him, and more and more girls too, uh, around that age. Um, hey, that's great, you know, music is wonderful, but it just doesn't do it. I want, sa yes, okay, Lord, sound can be a way to break through this, and they've tried it with. I've known people that have tried using sound and music with some kind of technology to break through into the fourth and fifth dimension to create contact with these beings. <sighs> it's just, it can't be that complicated. But yes, sound can bridge that gap. The problem with them is, you know, light does nothing. Technology is nothing. We are more technological within ourselves than anything they've ever created. So sound alone can break through. And maybe the Lord will help me in that regard. Because I, I, I don't really want to... I'll put my attention on whatever. You want me to put my attention on terrestrial things? Uh, the, uh, you know, the bad guys? I can just say this. Everything I said about the United States, what's going to happen here, you know, that kind of sticks. It's like kind of a mixed bag, you know. People in Washington are being punished. Washington is being punished by God. But the good people out here, they're just, you know, trying to have a good life and take care of their kids and everything. The Lord is helping them. And, you know, I never had a thing for country, but the country people are generally, you know, God-fearing and, you know, strong work ethic and strong biblical values and whatnot. The Lord's going to take care of them. You know, it's really just a punishment right now on the wicked, okay? And that's what our music has been about. But the good will be lifted up, and that's the mixed bag we have. I think maybe it's best not to look at it as America or, you know, as, as, the, as countries, but look at just people. But the, I wouldn't want to be in Washington, D.C. right now because it's going to be treated like Sodom and Gomorrah. Sorry to say, but it's pretty bad. You got China out here testing, uh, you know, their, their war gaming, bombing um, San Francisco and Los Angeles, and that's published on the Internet today. I'm like, yeah, that could absolutely happen. Absolutely, the nuclear war vibe is out there big time, and it's been staved off, but, I mean, it's, it's by no means over. And furthermore this kind of like big intervention, big terror things that are happening, that's out there too. So, you know, that's, and that's all ready to go. They'll, they will roll out the terror when they good and well need it and when they're ready and when they figure they got to hire other Hollywood producers that can help deliver uh, a false flag terror attack that can't be detected. That's what they're working on now. And the EMP blackout that's going to, that's going to end civilization forever. Um, that's out there. They can pull that off. And mass plagues through nanomachines uh, that will kill everything on Earth. They've got that up their sleeve. So, you know, without God, you're, uh, without supernatural intervention on a daily basis, 
we're toast right now for any number of these things. So that increases my faith. And also the Lord's the only way to get through this. And there were things I asked him he wouldn't answer me because he can't because of the rules. He can't tell me. Because he's got some deal with Satan, with, with the reptile, with the, the leader of, you know, the, 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 the number, numero uno rebel or whatever that he appointed that really has to do with having the dark side of things. I, look, even that's complicated to me. But there's a rule where they can't, they just can't lay it all on you, you know. The Lord cannot, will not tell me everything. I'm still stuck here. But I don't want to get all caught up in, you know, the, uh, the, the mind control lies out there surrounding this topic. So it's very difficult, you know. And uh, we'll just have to take what pieces and crumbs of information we get. Like, it's all warfare. That may, you know, and you come from there. And that's your home. I mean, out beyond this. Uh, absolutely. Now, that you can take to the bank, but there's, the rest of it's real murky. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. Zeph Daniel, the Zeph Report. Um, happy all, all Souls Day or All Saints Day? All Saints Day. I'm glad you got through uh, Halloween. Um, Halloween bores me, so I don't deal with it. I'm sorry that they hurt people, but it's none of my business. You know, I'm not going to go look into that. I told you. I want to focus on, you know, this. Um, and, and well, if I were able to break it up and stop it, then tell me about it. But if I can't do anything about it, don't tell me about it so I can just have a vision of somebody, um, some of their rituals. I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to see it. If I have the power to break it up and, uh, to, and, 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 and to pummel the bad guys, then let me know about it. Then I would, you know, they could shoot uh, all their military hardware at me and I would be impervious to it. If I could be a superhero like that, and I could go do something about it, then you tell me about it, and I'll come, it'll be Z to the rescue, okay? <laughs> Later.